Hello everybody, welcome back to The Only Way Is Beastly. We are playing re-entry and I am back boo. So today we will be continuing with the Lunar Academy, lesson number six, Flight Modes of the Lunar Lander. As of course, before we start, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Let's help keep this channel going. Okay, welcome to the Flight Academy lessons of the Lunar Module Academy. Roger that. In this lesson, we will focus on the primary guidance and navigation systems, the PNGS. The abort guidance systems, the AGS, is a backup system to the PNGS. The guidance and navigation systems available in the lunar module are many and can be quite involved. In this lesson, we will start with some theory before diving into the operations. Let's head into the airline. Zoom out a bit and let's get to a good standing height. There we go. Okay. First of all, as we are in space, there is no way of telling what's up and down. The solution to this is to define a frame of reference based on known directions and use this as a reference platform. So as you can see, that's a pretty big reference there. The reference frame can change throughout the mission, and what is defined as is not yet important. What's important is that the frame of reference is defined in the lunar guidance computer and in the abort guidance system. So we can't use that, but even still, to give reference for where we are right now. So the PNGS uses the LGC and an inertial measurement unit, the IMU, to keep track of this frame of reference. The IMU is a device on board the LM and keeps track of any attitude and acceleration changes and uses this to update the orientation and state vector, position and velocity. So the IMU needs some time to start and become operational. Please estimate a few minutes before the IMU is ready. To start the process, close the IMU OPR circuit breaker on panel 11. There we go. So, the no ATT light on the lunar guidance computer is illuminated when the IMU isn't operational and extinguished when the LGC is receiving information from it. So, your attitude relative to this platform can be visualized on the computer's lunar. Uh, on the commanders, sorry, commanders and lunar module pilots FDAI. This is the big instrumentation panel on one and two, uh, with a ball that indicates your attitude. The ball will show your angular attitude relative to the stable platform that the IMU is keeping track of. It can also show you angular rates using your pitch roll indicators, and attitude error using the yellow lines hovering above the ball. The error indicators will try to point you to the attitude requested by the LGC. Before we perform any attitude changes, we need to undock from the command and service module. We will not go into the correct procedures for this here, but let's close the hatch before proceeding. Right, okay, so we need to uh, switch back to the CM. Let's go down here. And the hatch is closed, so that's fine. Yep, so the hatch is closed. Let's go back into the LM. So, to close the hatch, turn around, press the C and open the, uh, the tools and communications menu. So, you press that, there you are. And uh, you'd look at the door. We'll do it now just for visualisation purposes here. And if you can see, there you are. We've got open hatch, close hatch. There you go. That is as simple as it is to open and close it if you haven't done that before. <coughs> Okay, so we've done that, so let's get rid of that sidebar because it'll irritate me otherwise. Um, so, you can use the flashlight and look back in the room behind the crew stations. Along the roof there should be a hatch and a button next to it. If the hatch is open, press the button to close it. Air inside the tunnel will be used to push the space crafts apart once the docking system releases the lunar module. So, with the tunnel closed, go to the command and service module and release the lunar module by setting docking probe to exit or release. So we're back in again to the CM. Keep it too far back. There we are, she's released. So the CM and LSM is now separated. Reverse the CSM from the LM by adding some thrust and pitch it a little to give the LM some room. Let's get back in there. Let's have an external view actually. I haven't uh, seen this one yet. Can we tell it's separated? Can we act? Even still, it's a very pretty sight. Yeah, I prefer that view myself. 
or perhaps that one. A bit more gold showing there. Anyway, I'm rambling. Okay. So the Lunar Module and the CSM should now very slowly drift apart. If not, control the CSM so this happens. So press it, Roger, when ready. We are ready. First, let's pressurise the RCS system again. To do this, follow the RCS pressurisation checklist located in the Subsystems Activation 4 checklist. You can find it by scrolling down to almost the middle of the pad, just before the RCS hot, cold firing check. So press set up RCS and Roger when complete. So mission pad, checklist, no, we need to switch to Luna, number four, and they said about halfway down. And then it's just before the hot and cold check. Set up the RCS. Bollocks. Try again. Okay, right, where are we here? Here we are. Right, I'm going to fly through this because I don't want to bore you all with just me flicking switches all the time. Panel 2, panel 2, panel 2. So is the RCS pressurised yet? Press Roger if yes, we will activate the RCS six system next. Yep, pressurised. Okay, so the TCAs also need power. Select RCS system A quad one TCA on panel 11 to close. Okay, roger that. So set RCS system A quad two to close. So, back on me, I've done it again every time. Put that there. Right. Again. Okay, and number three, and number four. Roger that. So this will be, where's that? That's panel 16. So that's RCS system B quad one closed. Two, and three, and four. Okay, then let's allow the rectants to flow to the quads. Is that meant to be reactants? Not quite sure. Uh, anyway, let's set the system A thruster pair quad one on panel two to open. Okay, let's set that one to open as well. And that one. Okay, looks like we're doing them all. Right. Give me a moment. There we go. So, and lastly, open the main shutoff valve by setting this, uh, the main SAV system A switch to open. And the B1. So the RCS is now ready. The hot cold firing check goes through the right procedures for this, but you will need to know a bit more to understand that checklist, so we are keeping it simple. We are now ready to get into the flight modes part of this lesson. So the first flight mode we will use is the pulse mode. We briefly touched on this on the RCS lesson as well. Set roll switch on attitude control section of panel 3 to pulse. Pulse is the middle switch, there we go. So that's a pulse as well. And that's a pulse, okay. So now the spacecraft is in a flight mode where each stick deflection or keyboard input will produce a short pulse. The longer you keep the deflection, the longer the pulse will be. Each pulse has a maximum length of 200 meters a second, I imagine that is. The IMU should be up and running now, and the attitude of the spacecraft should be visible on the FDAI. Yeah, relatively is, yeah. That has changed position. Try the pulse mode now and try to get used to how it operates. Uh, are you able to navigate the attitude so that the FDAI indicates where to pitch and your is zero? <laughs> Probably not. If you know how I play this game... Ooh. Oh, whoa, whoa, I can see that we're all moving. Oh, this is slightly. I'm trying to get bang on that. Oh, it's there. Wrong. 
I think that's the best I'm going to get it. So, the rate indicators of the FDAI, FDAI shows at what rate you are turning. Try to turn slowly as conserving fuel is a major focus when flying the lunar module. So, slow turns some fuel, of course. So, null all your rates, press Roger when ready. Oh, Christ, I can't even know they there. There they are, null. Hey, hey! That is good. So, let's give more control to the lunar guidance computer. Leave roll and switch. Uh, leave the roll switch in the attitude control section of Comic to pulse. Then, uh, pitch mode to count. Okay. So the LGC is now in control on pitch and yours. Set the PGNS switch in the mode control section to the ATT hold. So it is another position. So the spacecraft is now. There we are. She's in control. So the spacecraft is now in attitude hold mode. We also need to instruct the computer on how to handle the attitude change commands. Let's have a quick glance at doing this. Short pulses, short bursts, yes, I quite like that. It's a shame we haven't actually drifted away yet, though, isn't it? Mm, that is a shame. Perhaps that'll come in a different lesson, you never know. Or we're just going to be endlessly circling the same spot. Anyway, it's making me a bit nauseous, let's get it back in. Look at that! Oh, it doesn't like that. Right. Done it again, and bloody uh, nice Oh, let's go. Okay, so we do this by using the DSKY of the Lunar Guidance computer. Is it me or is this thing actually going nuts? It's just getting increasingly faster. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Right, that's getting ridiculous. Look at that. Let's open plants outside. I've got to see this. They're jammed on. So much for the freaking computer. How do I turn that off? See if I can sort this. I don't think I can. that was set too high and I didn't react quick enough because the computer didn't know what the hell it was doing. Yeah, I'm slowly getting there. Oh, thankfully, this is not another mission disaster. There we are. We've stopped. Right, so let's press verb on the DSK while let's get this done before it goes on another stupid spin cycle. Alright, so verb is set to 77. Let's enter. So this configures the attitude hold mode in a rate command and attitude hold mode. Each stick deflection produces a thrust when the stick is released. The LGC will try to maintain the spacecraft at the attitude you have when releasing the stick. Spelling mistake. In this mode, the longer you deflect the stick, the more acceleration it will produce. Try to apply some pitch now. Start with some short bursts. Okay. 
Notice that the spacecraft tries to stop when you release the deflection. Yeah, you can hear it going now. Try to pitch up and keep the deflection, hold the pitch up, key or axis in the deflection position. You can still hear it. Oh god, I've done it again. Keep doing this if I have to. I don't know whether this is a bug or what. I swear this is a bug. Notice that the spacecraft accelerates up to a set limit and then drifts slowly. When you release the stick, it will once again try to stop the race. At the moment, no, I don't know whether this is a bug or what, but uh, it's kind of annoying. Is that sort of it? Hmm, either way. Okay, so the digital autopilot is used to configure the maximum turn rate. Well, that's fucked! If this is anything to bleed and go by. So, when the stick is released, the DAP kicks in and tries to maintain that attitude. Pay close attention to the rate and you will see that they are slowly moving. In all honesty, I can't because I'm too focused on the bloody spinning. So, the DAP won't be able to completely null the rates of the spacecraft. A spacecraft will always have a turn rate, just like a ship on the ocean can't go in a perfectly straight line. The DAP is configured to allow a set dead band. Let's say this is to set to 5 degrees. The spacecraft will try to manoeuvre to the attitude when you release the stick. If the spacecraft goes outside of the dead band, meaning 5 degrees away from the target's attitude, the LGC will command a select set of thrusters to try to manoeuvre the spacecraft back into the correct attitude. It looks like we're approaching the dead band actually. Look at that big red dot. Or is it going to send us on another stupid swing? Doing that telltale noise again, isn't it? Insane, I mean. So the lower the dead band is, the more LGC attitude changes will be performed by the LGC. It's important to balance this. Where there is no need for uh, precise attitudes, keep the dead band high to save fuel. Play around with this for a while and get comfortable with flying the lunar module in this mode. It will be one of your many prim primary manoeuvring modes. It's important to practice now that the spacecraft is set up as it takes a while. Uh, to get set up here each time and yet another mistake there. Press Roger when ready to proceed. I'm not going to mess around with this anymore because I don't know if it's buggy or not and when it keeps spinning its tits off like that it's making me feel very sick. So let's jump back to the computer. Here we are already. The computer can be used to monitor a lot of the input and output channels of the LGC. For example channel 31 contains attitude change impulses as well as flight mode. So to monitor channel 31, press it for on the DSK. Oh, yes. oh, here we go. Okay. I'm going to press 1 again. And if not, you can clear. It's starting to go stupid again. I'm going to press it on the DSK. And 1 again. And 0. I'll do that. So this means that verb 11. Now, verb 11 means monitor octal component 1 in R1, and noun 10 means channel to be specified. Okay, that. So let's press enter to insert that command. Now, the LGC expects a channel it should monitor. Key 3 on the DSP. And then 1. And press enter. There we go. Based on the configuration of the spacecraft, the value in R1 should reflect the LGC flight mode and what thrusters it wishes to fire. In this mode, when idling, it should read 6777 as it does. This is a number in the octal numeral system. Converting 6777 to binary will result in a set of on and off bits reflecting the configuration of the LGC. So 6777 is equal to 1101. Double one, double one, double one, double one, double one, double one, one in binary. Channel 31 uses inverted bits, so let's invert this as well. The inverted bit sequence is 
those. In addition, it's also reversed so that so the reverse bit sequence is that. Bit 13 is set to 1. Now, looking in the re-entry lunar module flight manual in the PNGS chapter, bit 13 in channel 13 means attitude hold. We are now in attitude hold mode with no stick deflection, and the LGC tries to hold an attitude. It's trying to spin itself to death again. Stupid thing! It does it on its own before I have to correct it. That's definitely a bug, I'm telling you. If not, then I'm just a cock. So if you picture up, it will read 27776 before changing to 2775 before resuming back to 6. Double 7, double 7. Doing it again. Right. So do the same for two double seven seven six results in that. Like I said, I'm not going to mess around with this purely because of what's going on. I've, I've said it enough times, I think it's bugged. So bit one is the plus pitch command, bit 13 is the attitude hold, and bit 15 is to stick out. Bit 15 is that the stick is out of detent. Let's see if we can see the two just ever so slightly. Right. This can be good to use to check if things are in order and is part of the hot hold firing check. In addition to channel 5 and 6 can be monitored to see each of the thrusters of the LGC you wish to command. Now that we are discussing the computer, let's also check the DAP setup. So of course the DAP is used an extended verb to run the setup. On the DSKY, press enter to exit the monitoring of channel 31. And I've got the balance sorted. Bloody thing. Right. Enter. So then to, uh, right, I need to zoom in here, I'm getting old now. So verb 48, and press enter. This is usually shortened to V18E, meaning press verb, then forward, then eight, then enter, so I've done it. When doing this, the DAP setup has started. The first page we are viewing is now located in node 46, and displays two octal numbers, one in register R1 and another in R2, as you can see, and another, well, another R register, the R3 is empty anyway. And as you can see on here, we're spinning around like a madman again. So what we're interested in is R1. Each of the digits in R1 represents a configuration and can lead to A, B, C, D, E. Open DAP setup checklist in Lunar Module Checklist part of the mission pad. Let's see if I can get this sorted. No. It's so hard to tell sometimes when this is spinning. Yes, that's it. Why does it keep doing that? Turn this move off a As soon as we slow. Something stuck. Then we stop firing. There we are, turn it off. I can cope with that slow rotation, not that manic burning noise it was getting on the tits. Right, so we need. Uh, right, open the DAP setup checklist. DAP setup. And then the lunar module checklist part of the pad. You can use VIL 21 R21 to change that to that. Please note the sign, always use the sign. Press enter to make the change. Thankfully, it's not that big of a check. This is it's a verb 48 here, followed by verb 46 and 46. All right, let's give this a try now. I've got that spinning at a relatively more controlled rate. So, it's definitely something broke on that ATT hold. Definitely. Right, where are I? Okay, uh, so verb. Right, and third, oh, 21, enter. Let's change R1 to plus 1, 2, 1, 2, 2. And press enter. OK, 
Okay. So then press Pro. Let's Pro there it is. Okay. So we are now on 647. So this allows you to enter the weights of the LM in the CSM. Leave them in their default values for now and press Pro to complete the setup. There we go. So this allows you to reach faster attitude rates, but also costs more fuel to both accelerate into a turn rate and to decelerate out from the rate to maintain an attitude. Thankfully, this concludes the flight modes lesson. I know there was a lot to it, and I recommend you now read the guidance and control chapter of the re-entry lunar module flight manual. But first of all, if anyone else has actually done this successfully without this bugging its tits off, please comment below on how you did it and whether it's me being a cock or whether it's this that's got a bug in it, because I'd really like to know. It's kind of a shame that if this is the only one that's bugged, it's going to ruin the whole chain of these lunar module lessons. But so far, they've been relatively good. But you can't really do a, fl a flight lesson where you're having to constantly stop this thing from spinning its tits off. So, let's see how it feels. But anyway, thank you if you've managed to get this far. I know it has been a lengthy video, but thank you again for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. Please keep helping to grow this channel. Catch you at the next video, guys.